fans to see artists, their favorite artists on board for this. Um, what was it like when you first came to these artists and mentioned what you're trying to do? What did they say? Hallelujah. Please. Anything that anybody can do. Anything. We'll, we'll try anything. We'll do anything to support this. Uh, as, you know, all we have to do is hear it to realize it's real. You know, it's, it's got to be real. People have been fooled a few times. There's no magic potion. You just have to give people what they, what the real deal is, what the artists make. Several of the artists mentioned the music made them feel differently, or that it was warm and it had more soul. That's important, right? That's all my music's about. So uh, without that, I'm not the creek. I, I have no, I've got a leg to stand on. If you can't, if you can't feel that, because I'm not that cool and I don't have the beat and I don't have all those things that I. You know, some people can do great, and I, you know, I do it my own way with my own funky bands, and, and, and they're great, and I love playing with them. But there's just, you know, the soul of it, the feeling of the interplay of the musicians is in the air, it's in the cymbals, it's in, it's in the music itself, the interplay. That's where the magic lives, in the air. And if you take the air away, you just can't breathe anymore. So it's, that's it. Was this a progression that you felt like you had to get personally involved in this, or was there a network moment where you were as mad as hell and you weren't going to take it anymore? Kind of a combination. All of the above. Yeah, right? yeah. I was shocked when, you know, and I don't even know if I should say this, but I was deeply shocked by the fact that the venture capitalist world did not understand this opportunity. Uh, the fact that they couldn't own it, that you couldn't do something to the sound that they would own. Right. Somebody wanted to own it. And you know, we don't own it. If we fail and we come out and we try to do this, we've made enough noise so people know something's wrong and they can hear it. If some big, huge company comes along and kicks our ass with millions and millions of dollars, that's great for music. Right. That's what matters. <laughs> if they'll do what we do, it's a no-lose no situation. We win. Everybody wins. But support us. We're good. <laughs> well, the Kickstarter went live today, and I think you said you guys have got quite a bit of response already. Half a million dollars already? We're, we're already more than halfway to our goal, which is pretty cool after about four hours. Good. Hopefully you folks listen out there. You know, I can really relate to what you're saying about quality because I'm a music fan and a video fan. And does it surprise you when you see consumers, you know, buying HD TVs, buying Blu-ray discs to watch movies on, or, or getting Netflix in, in, in HD, but then in music, the quality is just... The consumers are not in control. The tech companies are in control. They control the market at this time. And that's when, when I went to all the record companies, I identified myself to them. I said, remember, I'm one of you. I'm a music person. I am a record company. I've been at these record companies probably longer than you have. And I'm concerned about the same things you're concerned about. And I want to bring music to where it can be. I don't want to bring it back. I want to take it forward to where it can be. It's the 21st century. Why should we be suffering through inferior quality at the hands of some giant mega tech company? It's just doesn't, doesn't work for me. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> well, the other thing about Kickstarter is its crowdfunding nature you really want to get listeners involved. That allows them to get involved, they get invested, and, and it can become viral amongst their friends and go forward, right? The idea is that everybody, this way of doing it is, is things have a way of working out, okay? We, we, we struck out with the investor capitalists because they couldn't see the opportunity to own this. But, you know, even when I said, well, what about Kleenex? Kleenex, doesn't Kleenex own the tissue business? But they're not, they didn't patent Kleenex. You know, it's a tissue, but they were the first big one and they marketed it well, and they did that. What's, there's a great opportunity here. This is the biggest opportunity ever to, to in, in audio there's never been such low quality. 
and an opportunity for it to be so great. The difference is so huge. It's an unbelievable opportunity. So I couldn't believe that they weren't jumping on board. So, and I was shocked, but you know, it didn't stop me. And I started realizing, well, I, it's gonna have to be music lovers. And we're going, well, how do we find some guy who really loves music? And we did, we found one guy who really loved music, who had really a lot of money. And because of him, uh, and he's, he, he doesn't want me to mention his name, I don't think. And I, I, I'm, so I'm not going to, but he is great. And he, he loves music. I've known him for 30, 40 years. I knew, I, I knew him back in the 70s when uh, he was hanging out with the band and I was hanging out with Ronnie, and, uh, with uh, Robbie and Levon and all those guys. And we, we were hanging out and, and playing in this studio and his, he was sending us chicken all the time because he has a chicken business. And, and, uh, and we were eating it and everything, talking about Johnny's so great. So he, he, uh, he helped us. So because of him, we're here today. He was able to help us to, to make it through all of the troubles that we had being an experienced business people and the mistakes that we made with our technology and all of the mistakes we made just through inexperience. And now we got to a place with his help where we were able to get to uh, have a great team of really great experts and to have a fantastic uh, partner in, uh, in technology, air acoustics. Uh, uh, and we've been able to accomplish everything that I really wanted to from a quality standpoint. And this thing sounds just great. It sounds really good. And it's cheap. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's not, a, you know, audiophiles, you know, they sometimes pay thousands and thousands of dollars for this. And this will blow it right away. Okay? This is just a little thing. And you say what you will. But you put this thing down and plug it into those big systems, it rocks. It'll pound it. I mean, it, and all the air in the world, so it's got it all. So Kickstarter and music lovers enabled us to get to where we are now. Where we're halfway to our goal, more than halfway to our goal after a few hours, which is so encouraging. Uh, and I'm so grateful to these people who supported us. Uh, and I really hope that they love their, their players when they get them and the music that's on them. And uh, uh, I, I really hope it works. But as I said before, if it doesn't work for us, it's gonna work for somebody because the cat's out of the bag. Once you hear this, you can't go back. There's just no going back for a music lover after hearing this. One of the fringe benefits of this succeeding, I think it's the end of this loudness war, oh. the debate. I mean, you wanna to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, the loudness war. I always thought the loudness war was really gonna be something fun. <laughs> I wanted, I saw in Austin they could have the loudness war in real time, right here in one of those parking lots. They set up bands all over the place, you know. We were thinking about it. And you know, if they got that under 20 dB, they were stopped. They're done. It's like a knockout punch. And they got to keep playing as long as they can, all at once. <laughs> yeah, everybody is. Now that's what I think a loudness war is. Yeah. Okay, you got you know some really loud bands all playing as loud as they can with the biggest PA's they got, and the people stand around in the middle, and get their heads blown off. And, and that's that's a loudness war. To Sounds me. like fun. Yeah, but the other loudness war is, oh, how loud can we make it on the radio or on the computer? You know, the computer is a, a piece of crap to listen to. There's nothing to listen to on a computer. It's a tiny little speaker. Get real. It's like ridiculous. And people, please put on your phones, at least. But don't, don't do that. <laughs> my son, I say to my son, how can you do this? You guys got to, you know, can't we get you something? Can't we get you some speakers? Something you can carry with you? Why don't they make a computer that's thick? It's got some balls. To it. <laughs> <laughs> so you may have another project. Right? <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it's a uh, it's a can of worms. Well, I think a lot of your fans know you're a very inventive person, but you couldn't do this all by yourself. And we have yeah. we got to bring up uh, John Hamm, uh, the CEO of Pano, uh, Pano Music, and he's going to talk a little bit too. And then we're going to bring some Q and A going. So I'm going to let him sit here, and I'm going to kind of. Be the Q and A police, all right? Okay, you great. Q and A police. Let's see, where's our? Uh... <laughs>